My name is Aaron Crosby Lyles, and this is News from the Can. Today, I'm going to be answering comments on my video, The Armageddon Line. I, you know, thank everyone out there for leaving comments, and um, I value everybody's opinion. This is a complicated issue. First things first, um, I don't get paid from any outside sources. My videos are monetized. What videos, you know, remain monetized, you know, uh, I do make money from that, but I don't make, I don't make very much. Um, yeah, I work for a living. I'm a handyman. I do tile work. I do whatever I can do, you know, to make a living. And um, that's how I make money. But, um, you know, uh, some interesting comments on here, you know, and it's things, these, these are things that are legitimate questions about who out there is a paid troll, who out there is a, you know, is an operator, somebody that might be working for a particular industry like the coal and oil industry or might have some other dog in the fight so to speak and usually that's about having money on the line for a particular uh, narrative being floated on climate change my passion is for the truth just to just to get to the truth the simple truth cut and dried get to it and then the simple truth with global warming is that it's not simple it's complicated we cannot look at, I just in my belief, we can't look at any anomalous warm trend in any particular area or any anomalous cold trend in any particular area at any particular time and point to that and say, see, no global warming or see, you know, uh, many ice age. Now, here are the facts. These are, you can check them out. You can see for yourself. We are headed into a grand solar minimum. Less sunspots, less output from the sun, less energy from the sun means that you're, we are going to have colder temperatures in the Arctic regions. This is a fact. Fact two, global ocean heat content. The amount of heat absorbed by the ocean is 15 times higher, 15 times higher than they were in 1990. So there's excessive amounts of heat in the ocean. That means more evaporation. That combined with less output from the sun, colder temperatures in the Arctic regions, colder temperatures in the uh, interior of continents and that's a recipe right there for more frozen precipitation more frozen precipitation leads to the albedo effect uh, less you know it's a feedback loop less energy absorbed by the sun and so forth that's happening in the continental regions while the oceans are going to hold on to that heat so you have to look at the heat capacity of water and how long it takes for water to give up its its energy that it is absorbed and the way that that energy is given off is in latent heat of vaporization and things like that when you boil water the pot will stay at the boiling point of water until all the water is boiled away what that means is that the heat that you put into your pot of boiling water is given off from the water in the form of steam so you have heat that's absorbed by the oceans that heat is given off in the form of evaporation. You're putting more water vapor into the atmosphere. You're going to have colder interior continental temperatures, colder polar regions. That's a recipe for more frozen precipitation. You have the albedo effect where the white snow reflects solar radiation, less solar radiation over the next 30 to 40 years. When you have higher temperatures in the polar regions momentarily, what what ends up happening is you have a wave year. You have a wave year jet stream. So there it's hard to predict how this whole thing's gonna go down. You know, what exactly is going to happen. But you know, the recipe is there for massive amounts of frozen precipitation. Now, let's look at this little anomalous bands of higher temperature here, but this is a cold patch right here. That's where the thermal haline overturning dives down right here in this, this region, and that's cold. That's cooler. It's a little bit cooler. It's not way, way super cooler, but it's a little bit cooler. You can see that. Whereas in some of these other regions up in the Arctic, around the Arctic Circle are anomalously warmer. And it's, you got this big patch right here in the central United States that's anomalously warmer. So what they say this means is that then what they have evidence of at this point is that the North Atlantic current is shutting down. Now that's a current that cuts across right across and brings warmer water across. It's a barrier current. This is something that we talked about in the Armageddon line. We had, there's Apparently there's evidence of this, and I'm looking at it right here. This is January 9th, 2018. You know... 
you got to go to the University of Maine. ClimateReanalyzer.org is out of the University of Maine Climate Change Institute. So just to go back and, and sort of reiterate, it's, it's, it's complicated. Like, once again, going into a grand solar minimum, less output from the sun, less radiant energy absorbed from the sun by the earth at the polar regions typically cooler while the oceans that have the successive amount of heat put more moisture across these colder reaches and dump more frozen precipitation it's just a more to me it's more of a recipe for for advanced uh frozen precipitation so that's all that and all that's all that is to say that you can't pigeonhole what's going on and nobody really knows i don't profess to know what's going to happen next but what we've seen is that uh, we've seen stronger storms. And, uh, you know, the other wrinkle here is the magnetic pole shift of the Earth. The magnetic field of the Earth, and the poles are shifting and weakening. And, um, you know, and, and there's effects that can happen. That, so nobody really knows. So let's look at some of these comments. This is kind of typical here. Uh, J.D. Money. <laughs> I predict we will have cold weather until around May. Then it will warm up until around October. Then it will be cold until around May. Then it will be hot until October. And this has 426 replies. So, uh, whatever, dude. <laughs> it's all good, guys. It's winter. Relax, you know. Oh, here you go. No mention of aluminum, barium, strontium, nanoparticles, trillion watt lasers, sulfuric acid, agenda 21, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, well, um, yeah, I don't really do that kind of material on my, my channel. And, you know, why would they do that, really? And who are they? You know, I mean, you know what I mean? Who are they? So, they're, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, um, it might be the Anunnaki. You never know. Here's another one. The sky is falling. Okay, sure. It's pretty fucking clear to me that there are so many variables to take into account that it's impossible to predict what exactly will happen to our planet. Weather and climate are very difficult things to fully grasp, but regardless of our effect on the climate, we should still switch to cleaner fuels and quit polluting so much. Doesn't matter how you cut it, that course of action is just the right thing to do. It's too bad that Democrats find it easier to tell others to change than to... Okay, so, yeah. You know, um, let's boil this down, too. Uh, um, you know, political affiliation and all that kind of stuff, um, social justice, whatever, these are all devices of social division to keep working people divided against their own best interests. Yeah, the big players, the super rich, have an interest in keeping us all squabbling with each other so we don't get together and, and get some equitable taxation. Do you want equitable taxation? I do. You know, let's get some equitable taxation. Let's just tax everybody the same amount. You know, we could probably tax everybody 10% with no, you know, if, if there were no if you couldn't write anything off and that's just what you paid you know and it's a racket everything's a racket yeah that's true you know but let's look who really has something to gain and that would be the super rich because they want that power and that all boils down to they want their hamburger in a timely manner with alacrity and a smile see what i'm saying they want alacrity from their slaves so that's that and that comment was from james wilmus thanks for commenting guys appreciate it I can't pronounce this. I have no idea what it's. Huh? That must be like a joke. G R N H R N T S K. I have no idea why that was scatto, whatever. You were using movies to support your assertions of catastrophic weather event and an administration full of climate deniers. Yeah, well, what else? Yeah, okay, yeah, pretty much. That phrase says it all. As usual, anyone who asks questions, particularly about why all the previous end of times weather model predictions have not come to pass, they are slapped with the label of climate deniers. Pure bunk. Well, okay. Bunk this. Obviously, the oil producers want to sell more oil. The coal producers want to burn that coal, coal and sell more coal. So the global warming thing, you know, anything that's going to that's gonna cut down on their bottom line, they're, they're going to work against that narrative, the global warming narrative. Okay. Global warming's real shit. I just, you know, just... 
and this is it this is the drop dead right here this hockey stick right here i'm sorry folks hate to be the bearer of bad news but this one right here this is the most compelling piece of data that i've seen you know mauna loa the parts per million of carbon dioxide is over 400 parts per million and and what that's led to is this and is this dramatic increase in heat energy trapped by the oceans it's just a fact sorry don't know what to tell you you know what i mean analyze the data show me that that data is wrong that's what you do you want to argue with it okay show me how this data is wrong demonstrate it to me show me the numbers facts talk bullshit walks let's rock and this one here uh astro train 100 he says laugh out loud art bell i know you know guys i know and i laughed i chuckled when i said it by the likes of art bell and whitley streber they wrote the book but they they wrote the book and it just so happens that their book the coming global superstorm seems to me sort of kind of like on point you know what their and their whole thrust of what they were saying was about how rapidly this massive climate change event happens how rapidly an ice age can onset because the thinking has been for a long time that ice ages sort of gradually came upon us and what they were what their whole thrust the whole point of what they're saying is that no an ice age can can happen suddenly and dramatically how suddenly and dramatically who knows even the big heavy global warming people are at this point are basically saying yeah you know that's a thing then they're starting to talk about sudden climate change you know rapid climate change well they're talking about sudden onset ice age you know so global climate is it's enormously complicated you know you're talking about issues of fluid dynamics th uh, thermodynamics and and um, magneto hydrodynamics for that matter you know there's a lot of stuff going on and there you know we could have a turd thrown in the punch bowl at any time we could have a massive volcanic eruption you know and uh if anybody was around in in florida in 1983 we had extreme cold weather it was so cold here that the oil for our furnace froze in the tank we had to go out and bust it up so that the with the with the board <laughs> with a stick or something so that the furnace would work so that's how cold it was and that was caused from several large i think el chachong was one of them several large volcanic eruptions spewed a bunch of sulfur compounds into the into the stratosphere and caused advanced cooling and it's and it got very cold one of my videos i talk about how methane crossing the tropopause into the stratosphere can inject water into the stratosphere and cause advanced cooling so there's no reason for them to you know to do any kind of chemtrails or any of that kind of stuff to to modify the the environment it's it, you know all these things are happening anyway you know it's like why would you why would they play with something like that when it's these things are so hard to predict it's it's hard to predict how um any any tinkering you do uh any sort of uh geoengineering tinkering that you do it's really hard to say how just exactly how precisely how that stuff is going to work anyway there's no telling what sort of you know of course i mean we're not really above playing trying to play god with you know uh, genetic modification and everything else which to me is is a lot scarier you know gen genetically modified organisms and uh, microorganisms genetically modified microorganisms that's the scariest shit we got going on right now frankly but nobody wants to talk about that because that's too real you know whatever anyway uh sarah ann wash yourselves clean up your lives remove every speck of evil in what you do before me Okay, big capital me, obviously meaning God. Hope you're not having a, a, a messianic complex here, Sarah. I'm sure you're fine. That's fine. Put an end to all your evil. Learn to do good. Commit yourself to seeking justice. Make right for the world's most vulnerable, the oppressed, the orphaned, the widowed. You know, sure. Why not do that anyway? Just because it feels good to do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Why do you got to have? A, why do the end times have to come along? For people to quit being acting like shit bags, you know, acting like a shit bag just just causes more suffering in your own life, you know. And it, it does seem like some people get away with it for a long time, but I'll tell you, man, suicide's on the rise. So here we go: Liberty, precious metals, and investments. Well, that's subtle. 
<laughs> That's the guy's the name of the guys. It's a, I guess it's the name of the channel, his or her. Big difference in understanding that the Earth has great temperature swings over long periods of time with smaller occupancies in between the larger ones and being a climate change denier, as you said at the end of your video. The political climate change crowd, including you, I guess only wants the hoax that man actually causes us to believe in order to tax mankind into slavery with carbon credit schemes. Now, if you want to get back to science and not be a denier yourself that the Earth has its monumental heating and cooling fluctuations situations almost like cloakwork is determined by deep arctic ice co2 levels that are millions of years old so yes the earth is about to begin a massive cooling phase starting around 2020 but it doesn't have a damn thing to do with man so get off your radical leftist high horse and fuck you and try to, pro to project truth to people <laughs> Uh, anyone that uses the term climate change denial when using it as a slur towards intelligent, logical people that see zero evidence for it being man induced, blah, 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 political hack, and how, by the way, you might want to check the Arctic ice cap from 2014, blah, blah, blah. It's over uh, triple in size to stop spreading lies. Okay, well. Like I've said in previous videos, the process is complicated. Images. So here's the Maunder Minimum. The Maunder Minimum was a period between 1600 and 1750 where the sun, where we had less output from the sun. Okay? Here's the difference between the monitor minimum and now. Okay, so here we are, and you can see less sunspot activity. It's going down and down. They predict grand solar minimum. No argument here. You got no argument from me on that point. Let's say we have another monitor minimum. Let's say we're due grand solar minimum, another minimum. The difference between us now and the monitor minimum here is about 300 parts per billion. I'm sorry, 300 parts per million in CO2. That's the difference. The difference between the Maunder minimum and and where we are right now is this. I don't know what. That's 1960. I don't know what the sea looked like back then. Okay, I don't pretend to know. But I do know that since 1960, we've risen exponentially. And this is because of CO2. This is because of global warming. So that's the difference between monitor minimum and now. Why is this important? Because okay, the monitor minimum, there was there was the oceans were cooler, had not absorbed as much uh, radiant energy, um, there was not as much carbon dioxide, not as much greenhouse warming, probably not as much methane because there were less people on the planet. As a matter of fact, there were crop failures, people were dying, blah blah blah. So what that meant is when the sun started to heat back up again, everything kind of sort of returned to normal. Where we are now, we experience a monitor minimum. Now, with all this heat energy in the ocean, you know, take a pot of boiling water out in the middle of a cold day in January uh, up in the, around the 40th parallel, you know what I'm saying, where it's nice and cold, and watch that heat rise up out of that thing. I've seen steam rising off of joggers that moisture in the atmosphere turns into frozen precipitation. There's your jagged jet stream. So that's the difference. And that's what I would say to you, Liberty Precious Metals and Investments. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you know, we're talking about money changing hands and shit like that. Right, and here's this guy with all this blah, 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 blah. And the name of his frickin' channel is Liberty Precious Metals and Investments. Does this guy have, an, does this guy have a, a, a remuneratory dog in the fight? I'm just asking. It's a, it's a simple question. So, thanks for commenting. I, I, I like comments from everybody, man. You know, you know and here's another point here, too. I, I need to get into. Yeah, you know, it looks as though the shit is... The shit's been hitting the fan. This is something that Guy McPherson has talked about before. You know, the shit's been hitting the fan for 30, 40 years. You know, all of the starvation that we've seen in Africa and everything like that, it's been hitting the fan. But it's going to start hitting the fan even more. It's been hitting the fan even more. So, um, you know, what do they call it? Bombogenesis? Let's just look at the... God damn it. There we go. So, you know, bombogenesis. So you're going to just see more of that, you know. And it's it's all, it's in the video, you know. And I've got other videos about, about this kind of stuff. 
the shit's hitting the fan, and 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 probably you know some of these guys are right. Yeah, there probably ain't really much that we can do about it at this point. Uh, you know, pretty much I think the die is is cast. You know, uh, and uh, it's just going to be a matter of what we do about it. And I'm, I've got some comments about that. Um, about um, geodesic domes, lightweight, and they can hold a lot of. You know, they're structurally sturdy, lightweight, pretty cheap to build. That's going to be one of my next videos. Okay, I got to go. Um, so anyway, yeah, I got a lot of comments on here. I want to thank everybody for your comments. I value your comments. I even, you know, I, I value everybody's comments. Um, you know, everybody's got a point, you know. And the bottom line is we need to stick together and... and uh, <coughs> Anybody living above that line, that 40th parallel line right there, um, really anybody living above the 30th parallel, which is down here somewhere, you know, the, you, you got to watch, you know, you be prepared for, for harsh winters between there and here and anybody living above that, you need to have some sort of a strategy in place in case you should experience super duper heavy snow, you know, you all stay safe and uh, that's all I got. My name is R. Crosby Lyles, and this has been News from the Can. Thanks for watching. See you.